Jess from Sally Tomato and welcome to our channel. Here we teach sewing tutorials for making professional looking projects that are easy and fun to make. Today I'm going to show you how to make a stylish tote bag using my Molly bag pattern. This spacious satchel is perfect for everyday style. It features interior zipper pocket, interior slip pocket, side strap closure, a magnetic snap closure, and comfortable shoulder straps. Before we begin the tutorial, please make sure to purchase the pattern. You can find the pattern and all the supplies to make this project on our website, sallytomato.com, or you can request them from your local quilt shop. The supplies you need are listed on the back of the pattern, including a list of helpful motions. I'm sure you're eager to dive into this fun project. I encourage you to pause the video as the steps progress so that way you can sew along with me. Before beginning, please review the back of the pattern cover for the recommended fabrics. Each pattern is different and there are specific materials needed for certain areas of the pattern. Also included in the pattern are pre-made labels, so you can cut these out and either pin or clip them to your pieces as you cut out all the pieces to keep everything neat and organized. So here are my fabric choices. For my exterior fabric, I chose to use a canvas and this will be for the front and back of the bag, the side panels, the front and back top facing, and then also the side top facing. For my lining fabric, I chose this green material, but this coordinates really well and it's a nice mid-tone to help hide some of the dirt, but then it's also light enough so that way I can see the things inside my bag. And this will be used for the lining pieces as well as our zipper pocket lining and our slip pocket. For the contrast fabric, I chose cork fabric. So I love sewing with cork and faux leather because you can leave the edges raw and that's key for the handles and the side straps of this pattern. You'll also need a lightweight interfacing. I recommend a woven interfacing since we're sewing with woven fabrics and it's fusible on one side. So this will be used to interface our exterior pieces and then also our base support. Next, you'll need some foam stabilizer. This is a go-to interfacing when sewing with bags. It adds a lot of nice body and stability. It compresses as you sew, and if you wrinkle it, it just pops back into shape. So foam we are going to use for the front and back and also the side panels. And then lastly, you'll need some heavy stabilizer, such as Bozal Craftex or Pellon Peltex. So this is really firm and it's a non-woven stabilizer. This will help prevent the bottom of the bag from sagging over time. That's another key component to all of our fabrics. We also need a zipper for this project. I'm using Sally Tomato Nylon Coil Zippers by The Yard. So here I have a large roll and I can just cut the length that I need and put a pull on. So I'll go more into detail about that. But since it's a nylon coil, we're able to cut and sew directly over the teeth. So I'm going to open this up and show you the purse hardware I needed for this project as well. And I have some extra hardware in here. You'll need some rectangle rings. These are inch and a half wide. You'll need four of those. One one inch D-ring, one one inch swivel hook. So this will be used for the strap closure. You'll need four purse feet or you could use up to six, so the pattern has instructions for installing six purse feet, but you certainly could just do four in the corners. And then with the purse feet come some washers. So there's six of those to go with my six purse feet. And then you'll also need a magnetic snap. I'm using size three quarter inch wide, so that's just the diameter measurement, just three quarters of an inch. So that'll be for the magnetic snap closure. And you'll have two washers, one for each side of the snap included with that piece of hardware. And then I also have a zipper pull for my zipper. So I'm gonna set all of this aside. So I've already went ahead and fused the interfacing to most of my pieces. So you're gonna start with your exterior front and back. And you're going to simply center and fuse the interfacing to the wrong side. So this will help add a little bit of body to it and stability for when your bag is complete. So that's why it's important to take the time to fuse the interfacing to your fabric. 
So I've already done that. So the edges will all line up and you'll just follow the manufacturer's instructions to fuse it to the wrong side of your exterior front and back pieces. And then you'll repeat for the exterior side panels. So I've already went ahead and fused interfacing to each of those. The interfacing is a little bit different for the slip pocket. So here's my lining slip pocket piece and you're gonna place the fusible side against the wrong side and center it along the top edge. So if you're using a directional print, you wanna make sure that this is the top edge that's aligned with your interfacing. I'm just gonna grab my wool pressing mat and my Aliso travel iron and go ahead and fuse my interfacing to the wrong side. This is a really handy little set to keep nearby so that way you can give your projects a nice quick press over at your machine if you need to. All right, and then you're going to fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of each of your top facing pieces. So there's the longer facings, which are for the front and the back of your bag, and then the shorter are for the side panels. So you're simply going to just center and fuse the interfacing. It's a little bit smaller than each of your exterior fabric pieces, and that's so it reduces some of the bulk in the seams. And the last piece to attach interfacing to is your base support out of your heavy stabilizer. So you're just gonna fuse one piece of interfacing to each side of the heavy stabilizer and this will make the base support even firmer and this will be a supportive piece to add to the bottom of the bag. So next we're almost ready to start sewing. We are going to attach the foam to coordinating pieces. So there aren't very many pieces of foam. There are your front and back and then also the side panels. So what you're going to do is with right sides face up, you're going to take your front panel, front exterior panel, and align all edges with your foam stabilizer. I like to use Wonder Clips to hold the layers together instead of pins because it doesn't pucker your fabric and they can hold that thickness really easily. And also they help compress the layers and prepare for sewing. All right, so once you have all of the pieces clipped, we're gonna top stitch each of the pieces to the foam with a quarter inch seam allowance. I've attached a narrow foot to my sewing machine. I love using this foot for the entire project and I'm also sewing on the Baby Lock Accomplish, so this feeds the fabric really well and this is a combination that works really well for me. However, you might want to try using a walking foot and that will evenly feed the top fabric as the bottom fabric is fed through the sewing machine if you're finding that your fabric is shifting or puckering as you sew. And if you're using maybe a more tacky fabric, then you could also try using a tough one foot. So since this is just a basting stitch, you can have a longer stitch length. I'm gonna just turn mine to three and a half for now. And also, now is the time to add any quilting if you want before we move forward. So you can certainly do some free motion quilting designs or stitch a grid, whatever you would like. Now is the time to do it and be creative and have fun with it. I'm using cork fabric for my handles. I love it because it's a sustainable fabric. It's eco-friendly, it's super soft and durable, water resistant, I could go on and on. Uh, but they're very lightweight for the material itself, how it feels. It has a really sturdy body to it already so we don't need to add any interfacing and we can leave the edges raw. So I'm gonna show you a really fun technique for making handles out of cork fabric or faux leather. So you're gonna take each of your handle pieces from your contrast fabric and on the wrong side, I've already went ahead and done this, I've measured along the width and then also along the length and marked according to the pattern on each corner. So I also did this for the opposite end. And then you're gonna draw a diagonal line to connect those two measurements. Then you're going to cut along the line to taper the ends of the handle. So this technique is gonna help reduce some of the bulk and create some shape to our handles. And you'll repeat for the remaining handle as well. So once your ends are tapered, we're gonna fold each length side of each handle to the center 
and you could use some basting tape to hold the layers together for these straight long edges. I'm just going to grab some wonder clips and clip them together in place. And since cork is an all natural fabric, you can certainly iron it, but because of how durable it is and the thickness of it, it just tends to bounce back when you iron it. So the clips and the tape are really the better option. So then for these ends, you're going to line up the cut edges in the middle. And what's nice about the clips is you can readjust so everything is as flat as possible. So after one handle is done, then you can clip the other handle. So after clipping each of your handles, you're going to measure in from the short edge and mark a horizontal line across the strap according to the pattern. And you'll do that in from each end of both handles. So then we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and you're going to start at the short edge on one side and you're going to sew up to that line that we just marked. It's always a good idea to backstitch. And then once you reach that line, you're going to pivot, sew across the line, and then sew back down the opposite side. And I'm sure you've noticed kind of this bubble or this bulk in the middle. So now that we have it stitched together with everything lined up on the tapered end and the flat strap end, you can take your scissors and just trim away that bulk from the middle and stay about a quarter inch away from your stitching. So this is what it will look like. It doesn't have to be perfect since it's going to end up being hidden, but at least everything is flat. So then we'll repeat for the opposite end of the handle and for our remaining handle. And next you're going to take one of your rectangle rings and thread it over the short tapered end and fold the short end to align with your stitch line or that line that we marked earlier. I'm just going to add a clip to hold it in place temporarily and you'll add a rectangle ring on each end. So then you're going to fold the handle in half along the length. So I'm going to remove these clips and encase those raw edges in the center and then clip in place. And for the ends, you'll want to fold it as tight as possible to the hardware without puckering the ends of the handle. So that way that tapered end gets tucked inside. So make sure everything stays nice, tight, and folded. So feel free to use as many clips as you like to make sure everything stays nice, tight, and secure but this is what your handle should look like so far. So you're gonna to refer to the pattern and measure from the folded edge over and mark, and that's where you're gonna to wanna to start stitching. So we're gonna stitch across the strap and then sew down the folded edges with a quarter inch seam allowance to the other side, and then stitch across the other end of the, the handle and then repeat for the remaining handle. So here's where that narrow foot comes in handy. You could certainly attach a zipper foot to your machine or a Teflon foot for a nice clean stitch. So here I have both of my handles top stitched. I think they look super professional and they're gonna be a great addition to our bag. So if you're finding that sewing over the folded area is a little too thick for your machine or you're not comfortable with it, don't worry, you can just sew the length side and make sure to back stitch. Then at each folded area, you can punch a hole using a rotary punch and insert a rivet or a Chicago screw. We do have a tutorial on how to install rivets and Chicago screws on our YouTube channel, so check that out if that interests you. So for now, you can set the handles aside. So here we have our handle connectors. There are four pieces that you'll need to cut out using the pattern piece included in the pattern. And then this is a piece of your contrast fabric as part of the handle connectors. So you are going to equally space each of the connectors onto the back piece. So these will be the front and then this is your back. And you can use basting tape or basting spray to hold these in place. I'm going to use some Sulky KK2000 temporary adhesive spray. Um, so you'll want to spray this in an open area 
and away from your sewing machine. Um, just for this demo, I'm gonna risk it <laughs> and just spray it right here at my work table. I really like using the spray because then you have a really even coat on the back side of the fabric. Whereas the tape, you'd have to use a lot of pieces around the edges. So then we're gonna take your scissors and cut along the outer edge of each of the front pieces. And by doing this, cutting around each connector, you're ensuring that the back side of the connector will be even with the edges of the front. So if we were to cut out eight pieces individually, sometimes the cutting can be a little off, so that way we ensure it's right along the edge and everything is lined up perfect. So after each of your pieces are cut out, you're gonna grab your ruler and a removable marking pen. I'm just using a friction pen, so this can be removed with the touch of an iron or with the tip, it can just be erased. So I like using this for cork fabric, it shows up really well, or you could also use chalk. If you're using faux leather, you'll definitely wanna use chalk since you can't iron the faux leather. So you're going to measure down from the top short edge and mark a horizontal line across on each connector. So go ahead and do that. Perfect. And then we're going to head over to the machine. You're going to start at that top short edge, sew along that cut side edge, and stop sewing at the marked line, and then you'll repeat for the opposite side. We're not going to sew across the marked line at all, so only the side edges, and make sure to backstitch. So next, grab your handles from earlier, and you'll want the top folded edge face up. So here you have that folded edge. The underside is all the tucked in tapered edges. So have the face up, and then also the top side, whichever side you prefer to be the front. So you're gonna thread one connector with right sides up through a rectangle ring, and you flip this over to the back side and you're going to fold it down so from the fold to the end of the fabric measures according to the pattern. So refer to your pattern for that measurement and I'm just going to clip it in place up here and repeat for each end of the handle and each rectangle ring. So next you can attach a zipper foot or a narrow foot to your machine to help with this. But you're going to top stitch about a half inch from that folded edge nice and close to the hardware. So that's where the zipper foot or the narrow foot will come in handy. So I'm just gonna remove this clip. So here's what it should look like so far. And then you'll repeat for the remaining connectors to attach them in place. Next, on the right side of your exterior front, you're gonna mark a horizontal line down from the top straight edge. Also, make sure that you have your piece oriented in the correct direction, so it'll be taller than it is wide. So you'll mark down that horizontal line, and then you're also gonna measure in from each side edge and mark a vertical line. And these lines will be the placement for the handles. So refer to the pattern for the exact measurements. Then with right sides up, you're gonna position one handle on top of the front, and you're gonna match the outer edges of those marked lines with the edges of the connectors. And I've already gone ahead and added some double-sided basting tape to the wrong side of each connector, but you could certainly use some fabric glue to hold these in place. Now we're ready to stitch the handles in place. So you'll measure from the folded edge down, and it should be about 3 quarters of an inch, or approximately that line that you marked earlier across the connector, so you're going to start by stitching along there and make sure to back stitch. Now we're going to pivot and top stitch the curved edges of the connector with an eighth inch seam allowance. And as you go around, you can stop and lift up the presser foot to help readjust and for a smoother stitch. So here's what the front will look like so far. And I've already gone ahead and attached the handles using the same steps as before to the exterior back piece. Next, you're going to measure up from the bottom edge and mark a point 
according to the pattern and then you're going to also measure in from each side edge and where the marks intersect is where you will punch holes for your purse feet and this will be helpful for later on so you can use a rotary punch to do this or a small scissors just cut a little slit with a seam ripper and then also measure up from the bottom center edge on both the back and the front pieces. So I've already punched the holes on that one. I really love using a rotary punch for this. So I already have my places marked on my fabric and I have the dial set to the smallest hole for the purse feet. And then you can simply just squeeze the rotary punch and it cuts cleanly through all the layers. So this is the Sally Tomato Rotary Punch. It comes in handy for installing all kinds of purse hardware. The side straps that I'm gonna show you how to make are a really fun feature. They cinch the sides of the bag together to make more of a shaped look to the boxy bag. And then they can be clipped together or you don't have to clip them so it's more of an open tote. So it helps keep the items inside your bag from falling out too and just everything secure inside. So what we're going to do is you're going to take your four side strap pieces and then you can apply some glue, fabric glue, basting spray or tape, whatever is your personal preference. For this one I'm going to apply some double sided basting tape along the center. So then you can just simply peel off the paper side of the tape and with wrong sides together you're going to align all the edges of two strap pieces. So I've already went ahead and measured down from the top short edge, so this will be the top and I marked a line across on each strap piece. Next I'm going to top stitch each length side of both straps. We're going to start at the short end and stop at the marked line. After top stitching, you'll take one of your straps and one of your swivel hooks and with right sides up or the top sides up, you are going to thread the top of the strap through the swivel hook and then fold the end of the strap back onto itself according to the pattern. So from the fold to the end measures according to the pattern. And then we're going to stitch this to itself. I'm just going to do two straight lines, one along the fold, and then one about a quarter inch from the raw end. But you could certainly sew a box with the X, whatever you prefer. Then you'll take the remaining strap, thread the top end through your D-ring, and then fold it back onto itself according to the pattern. So this side is a little bit different and then top stitch the strap to itself. Next, on each of your exterior side panels, you're going to measure in according to the pattern from each of the longest edges. And you're gonna place one side strap between those marked lines, aligning the bottom raw edges and the marked lines with the raw edges, and repeat for the remaining side strap. You can certainly add some basting tape or spray to the wrong side. So you're going to sew along each of the length side edges and then also across the strap at that previous marking. So make sure you have the right sides face up. And if you'd like, you can install a rivet or a Chicago screw after stitching below that marked line for extra reinforcement and it adds a little bit of extra professional touch. The next step is to install the magnetic snap. So you're going to insert one half of the magnetic snap centered down from the top edge of each exterior front and back top facing. And what I did was I wrote the word top once I measured down the center point of where the magnetic snap was gonna be installed. So that way if this got flipped another way, I know that my measurements were both at the top and my snap is gonna line up in the end. Another tip for whenever installing hardware is to iron a scrap of your interfacing over the wrong side of the hardware and that'll prevent the prongs and the metal washer from rubbing against your fabric. You can see other tips and a full tutorial on how to install a magnetic snap with prongs on our YouTube channel for a complete tutorial if you've never installed a magnetic snap before. 
On the lining back, you're going to mark down from the top edge a horizontal line according to the pattern. And then you're going to also mark two vertical lines in from each side edge. So this will create a placement box for the zipper. Then you can take your scissors and cut along the marked lines. And this will create an indented section. Then with right sides together, place your pocket facing against the back, align the top edges and the indented section. Then you can pin in place. And what we're gonna do is finish off the raw edge where our zipper will be installed. Next, you're gonna sew along the indented section with a quarter inch seam allowance. Then take your scissors and snip the corners up to the stitches, but be careful to not trim into the seam allowance. And trimming the corners will help this lay flatter when we turn it. Then you're going to trim the seam allowance back to about an eighth of an inch wide. And we're gonna press the facing, so the facing and the lining are wrong sides together. So first I kinda just like to press it away from the seam allowance to get it ready and make it easier for turning. I'm gonna flip it to the back side and kind of roll the seam with my fingers to make sure everything is flat. Then I'm gonna press it from the front once more just to, just to make sure that everything is nice and crisp. Next, you're gonna take your lower zipper lining, which is the shorter piece, and then the upper zipper lining. And with the wrong side face up, you're going to press the bottom straight edge, which is the long edge, a half inch to the wrong side. One of the tools that I absolutely love is the Clover Hot Hammer. So you can place this against the wrong side and then just fold your fabric up to meet that half inch line and you can iron directly over the hot hammer so that way you have an accurate measurement. So I've already done that for each of my zipper pocket pieces. Now, I haven't prepared my zipper yet from the roll. I'm gonna show you right now how easy it is to put the pulls on, and I'm gonna use a new tool that we offer on our website. It's called the Handy Zipper Jig, and this is created by Gypsy Quilter. It works for size number three, four and a half, and size number five zippers. So the bottom has a coating on it, so it sticks really nice to your work table and doesn't shift on you. And then you'll notice that there are two slots. One's for number three, one's for number five. And if you're using a four and a half, you could use the larger slot. So here's my zipper pull. And if you'll notice, the side with the pull tab is the right side of the pull, or the top side, and the underside is flat. Also, there's a rounded end with two openings, and then there's a flat end with only one opening. So we're gonna have the rounded end with two openings face up, and we're actually gonna have the bottom side of the zipper pull facing us. And you're simply gonna slide that into the zipper jig with the pull tab away from you. And I haven't cut my zipper yet, so we can either attach the zipper pull onto the tape first or we can cut it. I'll just attach it first, then we can trim it up to the length that we need just to make sure that both of the tape edges stay aligned. So simply just separate the ends of the zipper tape and the top side of the zipper tape has the coil, the underside has the stitching with no coil. So have the stitching facing you and then you're going to put each end of the tape into one slot on the zipper head. And we found that if you angle the ends of the tape a little bit at about a 45 degree angle, and then you put them into the holes at the same time, and then simply pull down to slide the pull onto the tape. It's really that easy. So as I mentioned, this coil is nylon, so we can cut and sew through it. So I'm going to cut my zipper the same measurement as my pocket lining, and it also states in the pattern which size to cut it. And if you'd like, you could certainly take this over to the sewing machine and stitch a line across each end directly over the coils so that way your pull doesn't come off. But as long as you keep your pull in the center, you don't have to worry about that. Now I'm right-handed, so the way to position your zipper if you're right-handed is so that way it closes to the right. If you're left-handed, you'll want to flip it over so it closes to the left. So what I mean by that is when you unzip it and close it, I'm right-handed, so I want it to close to the right. 
So you're gonna align with right sides up the long raw edge of the zipper tape and your fabric for your lower zipper lining piece. Now we're gonna sew the zipper in place with a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure that you have your zipper foot or narrow foot attached to your machine. And if you need to, you can definitely move the pull out of the way as you sew. Take your ironing board again, or your pressing mat and your iron, and you're gonna press the pocket away from the zipper. So make sure that the zipper tape stays flat and the seam allowance is pressed towards the bottom folded edge. So make sure that your lower zipper lining is positioned wrong side up and the zipper is right side up along the top. Then you're gonna take your back lining piece and center it over the lower zipper pocket lining and align those top edges. You can use basting tape to hold it together. I'm just gonna add a couple pins or clips and also make sure that the zipper pull is inside the indented section. Then you're gonna top stitch in place along the indented section with an eighth inch seam allowance. Next, with right sides up, you're going to center the lining back piece over the lower zipper lining. Line up those side edges of each of the zipper lining pieces and then also the top edges. And on the back side, you can double check that your side edges are aligned and then also the bottom folded edges are aligned. And if it's not perfect, it's okay. So then you're gonna sew that zipper lining piece in place, starting and then stopping at your previous stitch line with a quarter inch seam allowance. And just take your time stitching this just trust the process, it's gonna turn out great. So next, you're gonna move the lining panel out of the way on the right side and align those right side edges. Mine's a little bit off, that's okay. As long as you catch the zipper, then this overhang can be trimmed later on. But you're gonna sew a quarter inch from the side edge all the way down, making sure that the bottom edges stay folded. Make sure to back stitch, and then I can trim away this excess later to help reduce some of the bulk. And now we're gonna repeat for the left side edge of the pocket. This time, I'm gonna flip it over so I can start at the top edge. Again, my pocket was shifted. Um, that's okay, so my pocket is gonna be just a hair smaller. So I'm just stitching a quarter inch in from the narrow edge, or the inner edge. So we're gonna leave the bottom edge open and not sew the bottom edge at all. And that will be for turning the bag right side out later. Another important thing is to make sure that you unzip the zipper. And that's crucial for when we turn the bag right side out. The Molly bag is one of the first patterns that I ever wrote. So over the years, I've been refining my processes, but this is still a really fun way to make a slip pocket and it's really crisp and clean edges and super professional. So I've set up my wool pressing mat and my Aliso travel iron, and I also have my Clover hot hemmer. This is really handy for pressing hems and it's what we're gonna be doing, pressing the top edge of our slip pocket. So as you remember earlier, we centered the interfacing and fused it, aligning that top edge so make sure that the top edge is what we're going to be ironing. So you can position that on your pressing mat. You can position the hot hammer against the wrong side and then fold that top edge down according to the pattern. So refer to the pattern for the measurement of the hem for this top edge of the pocket. And then you can simply just press directly over the hot hammer. I love that. Makes it super easy and very accurate. Then you're gonna fold down a second time. So that way that raw edge gets tucked inside. So make sure the hot hammer is tight against that folded edge for accurate measurement. I'm just gonna remove that, set that aside, and double check the pattern to make sure that the pocket measures correctly after pressing. 
Then take your pocket and unfold the top and trim the top corners according to the pattern. And this is gonna help reduce some of the bulk. Then refold the top edge and top stitch an eighth inch from that bottom folded edge. So next, back at the iron, you can give it another quick press. And then you're gonna press the bottom edge up according to the pattern. And then the side edges are gonna get pressed inward according to the pattern. Take your lining front piece and we're gonna center the pocket down from the top edge according to the pattern and pin it in place. Then you're gonna top stitch the sides and bottom edges of the pocket with the eighth inch seam allowance and then a quarter inch seam allowance. Always the exciting part. We're getting into the final assembly of the bag. All of our pieces are prepped and now we just have to put it together. So take your back top facing and your back lining pieces and you're going to align the bottom raw edge of the facing with the top raw edge of the lining. And you can pin this together. I'm just going to align it as I sew and sew with 3 8 inch seam allowance. take the top facing and press it away from the zipper and you can certainly take this over to your iron I'm just using a seam roller for a quick press and then you're going to top stitch the facing a quarter inch from the seam and also just double check that that zipper pocket lining stays out of the way as you sew Here's what the lining back should look like with the zipper. And I already went ahead and attached the lining front facing to the lining panel, excuse me, the, the exterior front facing to the lining front panel. And then you'll also repeat to attach each of the side top facings with the side panels. Next is to prepare the base support for the purse feet if you decided to install those. So I've already went ahead and measured in from each corner and where those corner marks intersected was where I put a placement mark for the purse foot. And then I also measured down from the center or in from the center edge of each of those long edges for the purse feet since I'm going to attach six purse feet. I love purse feet because they help lift off the bag when you set it on the floor or on the counter to keep it clean and help prevent the bottom, the bottom of the bag from getting damaged. And then also they just look really pretty. <laughs> so you can take your rotary punch again and I, I have it on the smallest hole setting and then just simply punch through all the layers. So these rotary punches are super strong and make it really easy to punch through thicker fabrics. almost done. So take your front and back exterior pieces and place them right sides together and align all edges. We're going to clip the bottom edges together. Then you're going to sew together along the bottom edge with a half inch seam allowance. And make sure to back stitch. Then take a scissors and trim off each corner of the seam allowance. Be careful not to cut through your stitches at the very ends. And then press the seam open. So I'm just going to use a seam roller for a quick press. And if you'd like, you could top stitch from each side of the seam allowance to help it lay flat. And I think I'm going to, so I'm just going to stitch a quarter inch from each side of the seam allowance. I think it'll look 
much nicer and lay flatter. With right sides together, you're gonna position one of your exterior side panels in the upper right corner of the exterior front and align those side edges. So align the right side edges and then also align the top edges and clip together along the side edge. Then you're gonna to sew together starting at the top edge with a half inch seam allowance and you're gonna stop sewing about a half inch from the bottom edge and you can mark up from the seam allowance to make sure that you stop the correct distance at the end of the seam. And definitely make sure to backstitch. So here at the end of the side panel, I've already marked up from the bottom edge of the side panel where I need to stop stitching according to the pattern. So make sure to backstitch at that point really well. So then you're gonna take a scissors and cut perpendicular to the seam up to the stitches. So be very careful not to cut through the stitches. So at that stop line, you'll cut directly across through all the layers. So then you'll press this seam open. So you can press that at your iron or use a seam roller and then trim off the top corner to help reduce some of the bulk. Then you're gonna paint the same process to attach the left side edge of the remaining side panel to the left edge of your front. So once you have that side attached, then you'll attach the remaining edges of the side panels to the back panel to attach it and make it all one cohesive piece. So next up we're going to create the box bottom corners. So what you're going to do is match up the bottom edge of the side panel with the bottom seamed edge. So your side strap should be centered right over that seam that you just made and then clip all those raw edges together. So here's what it looks like from the side, here's what it looks like from the bottom. Now we're going to do the opposite side. And this is really gonna turn out to a nice, deep, sturdy tote bag. So I like to sew with the base against the bed of the sewing machine, and here's the, the side panel on top. And you're gonna sew together with a half inch seam allowance and make sure to backstitch. You wanna catch those corners really well. And then trim away the corners to help reduce some of the bulk. And you can trim the seam allowance to a quarter inch wide. Just be careful that you don't cut through the seam allowance. So then we'll repeat for the opposite side. All right, so I'm gonna trim off this bottom edge to reduce some of the bulk, just like the other side. And then you repeat the exact same steps to make your lining and assemble your lining pieces. So I already went ahead and did that. So this is what it should look like. The front with the slip pocket, the back with the zipper pocket, and this piece is gonna be turned right side out. Okay, so then your lining can be set aside once that is assembled too. We're going to attach our base support and purse feet. So take your exterior and you're going to position the base support against the bottom of the bag. And here I have my purse feet. There's a foot and then the washer like I showed earlier. And you're going to poke the prongs through from the right side and poke the prongs through and then you're going to poke them through the hole on the base support. and then add your washer over top of the prongs and then bend the prongs away from the center. And I definitely recommend adding a drop of permanent glue and then adding your scrap of interfacing, ironing it over the top to protect your lining from getting scratched. And then you repeat to install the rest of the purse feet. 
All right, all the purse feet are installed. Now you're gonna make sure that the handles and the side straps are down inside the exterior. And you're gonna take your lining and place it right sides together with your exterior fabrics. And you're gonna align the top edges and those side seams. So I always like to line up the side seams first. And you can make sure that those seam allowances stay pressed open. So that way it helps distribute some of that bulk in the corners. All right, so one last time before we sew this thing, make sure that your interior zipper has been unzipped because we are gonna turn our bag right side out through the zipper pocket. So just double check that and then we're ready to sew. Now you're gonna sew around the entire top edge with a half inch seam allowance. All right, we're ready to turn our bag right side out. So what I like to do is pull out the lining first and then open up that unsewn edge of the zipper pocket and reach in for the base support. And then you're gonna to wanna to feed the base support through the opening first. Whew, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> So then you can push the corners out. Now's the time to just to double check all your seams, make sure that there aren't any holes. And then before you push the lining down inside the bag, you can stitch up that turning hole close. So I just align the raw edges or the folded edges, and then this can either be hand sewn or I just take it to the machine and top stitch with the eighth inch seam allowance. Do that quick. Perfect. And then that zipper pocket lining can get tucked inside the zipper pocket. You can zip that closed. And then push the lining down into the exterior. And then roll the top edge to make sure that the top edge is smooth and flat, and that seamed edge is right along the top. And I'm gonna add some sewing clips. All right, now you're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and top stitch around the entire top edge with either a quarter inch or three eighths inch seam allowance. Personal preference, up to you. And as you reach the side straps, make sure that you move those out of the way, and the same with the handles. That's it, we're done. So what do you think? So the magnetic snap is there for closure in the middle, and then the side straps can also clip in the middle for added security. I just love the shape of this bag and how sturdy it is, all the room for storing your essentials. So I truly hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for sewing with me today. And I hope you learned lots of neat tips and unique methods for making professional looking bags. Please share photos of your completed project using hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag Molly Satchel. We'd love to see the fabrics you chose and how you're styling your new shoulder bag. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you'll check out the rest of our pattern line for more professional looking projects. We'll see you next time.